Hi, I'm Mariah and I have extremely sweaty hands and feet. This is also known as hyperhidrosis and usually when I tell people about it, they say, oh yeah, you know what? I have sweaty hands too when I'm nervous and that is absolutely not what this is. This is next level sweaty hands and feet and something that doesn't happen only when I'm nervous. It's something that plagues me on a daily basis and has my entire life. Some people have hyperhidrosis, extremely excessive sweating due to other medical reasons. It's something that might pop up. And for other people, it's something that they've had their whole life and there's no explanation for it. It's something that really has an impact on day-to-day -day life, how you feel about yourself, um, how other people treat you because it is something that is considered gross. Um, for me, it really affected my childhood because uh, children tend to have thinner, more delicate skin. And so as a child, I would develop hundreds and hundreds of blisters all over my hands, between the fingers, and they would itch and they'd be pus filled and they would stop me from being able to sleep and they would be painful. And that cycle would repeat itself over and over again until luckily for me, I grew out of it. But I know that for some people that isn't the case. It did really have a huge impact on me, particularly in my teens, things like relationships, I would, lie to partners and just say that I hated holding hands and I just didn't like it or I thought it was lame because I was embarrassed um, and I felt like if they felt my really disgusting sweaty hand then they would not want to be with me anymore. Um, it would impact things like my schooling so for exams I actually had to get a medical exemption that no one ever found out about whereby I would be allowed to have breaks um, in which I would dry my hands. So basically, whilst everyone was really stressed about memorizing quotes and stuff for like the English paper, um, I would be there with 20 tissues bundled, trying not to make contact with my hand on the paper, otherwise it would sweat all the way through, ruin the paper, um, smudge the ink. So it's kind of just writing like that. And the whole exam was just the stress of trying not to ruin um, the paper. And then in between, just trying to dry them off and then remember stuff again. Uh, also with things like my professional life, I know that with my first job, uh, something that people get really nervous about is stuff like conferences, conferences and meetings. Um, they're worried about what they're gonna say and if they're gonna pull it off. I would worry about all of those things too, but with the added stress of worrying about my sweaty hands and how people would react to that. Because when you shake someone's hand and your hand is really sweaty, uh, sometimes people go, oh, your hand is sweaty. Or they don't even say anything and you just see that they're like, oh, which is completely justified, but it also just feels horrible when there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Over the years I have tried innumerable amounts of things and I have a previous video in which I talk about things that I've tried that worked and what didn't. So I have tried all the super super high concentration antiperspirants, they're usually super high in aluminium chloride. Uh, I haven't had any luck with them. I've had them dry the skin more but not stop the sweating. I've had one that was so strong that it pretty much caused cracks all over my skin, but then my hands still sweated. Um, and it was peculiar because in the shower, it would actually just repel water droplets. So that's how strong it was. And yet it didn't really curb the sweating aspect. I have tried things like Chinese herbal medicine. I've tried changing my diet, um, avoiding all things spicy, um, anything really flavorsome. I have tried sage tea, I've tried yontophoresis, um, industrial ones that you go to, so you go to an actual clinic and they have these huge machines. Um, I've tried the home kits, I have tried creams that have actually worked really well, um, and I will go through the top things that I've tried that have helped manage it as well as what I'm currently using that is really, really effective for me. 
so there are no cures for hyperhidrosis. Um, there is a surgery, I think it's called like E and there is a surgery that can be done which severs the sympathetic nerves that lead to sweating. It is a super high risk surgery. It can, for instance, result in the loss of ability to use your hands, which for me has never been worth the risk. It can also result in things like compensatory sweating. So you stop sweating in your hands, for instance, but then it occurs elsewhere in places that you may have never sweated before. So for example, you might suddenly have excessive facial sweat or sweat somewhere else. So that hasn't really been worth it for me either, the risk that is. Um, then there's also oral medications that you can take, like gly, oh, I don't know how to say that one oral medications <laughs> that dry you out that some people have a lot of success with. I personally don't want to take a medication every day. I know that everything has side effects and there's always some sort of consequence and I'm also not someone who drinks as much water as they should so overall just a terrible idea for me. So I feel like I've tried pretty much everything else aside from those two options and that is what I'm going to run through today. So today I'm going to run through the top three things that I have found that have worked over the years as well as the pros and cons. So I'm going to give them a rating. So coming in at number three, antihydral. Antihydral is a cream made of formaldehyde. I'm so bad at this. Um, it is a clean, a cream, damn it, that um, climbers frequently use, so rock climbers and the likes of them, and it is actually really effective. Now, I think it says to put it on sparingly every few days. Um, in order for it to have any impact, I had to use it every single day for three weeks, and after three weeks, it really worked. It really helped me, but I had to regularly use it. So after three weeks, I think I used it every second day. So I had to continue the usage. And it also had side effects such as thickening of the skin, yellowing of the skin. Yeah, it just altered the texture of my skin. There was a lot of upkeep. It also really severely dried the skin. So I did find that painful too. Uh, it was difficult for me to get in Australia and I wasn't that comfortable with the active ingredient given that that is a carcinogenic. So that's why I put it in at number three. It did work. It did dry my hands. I did have to use a lot more than people usually do and is recommended on the packet, but it did its thing. So that's number three. Number two is dry sport. So I have tried dry sport and Botox. Dry sport was slightly cheaper and it lasted longer for me personally. Now, the reason I've put this in as number two, despite the fact that it actually gave me completely dry hands for five months, which were some of the best months ever for me, um, is the fact that it's immensely painful it's so painful so in order to have it done i think they put 50 units in each hand that might be a botox it might be more for dry sport i can't remember but either way expect around 50 injections in your hand and it's at an angle and they have to wiggle it now i'm really really bad with needles and this was actually just traumatic i was so desperate to have dry hands that I went through with it and traumatic. If you think about the fingertips of your skin and you imagine those being injected by a needle at an angle and being wiggled about, it's horrible. It really is. And before they started, they tried to put some numbing agents on my hands, which was a cream. So 
of course it just slid on off because of the hyperhidrosis so really horrible experience it did give me dry hands for five months which was incredible but it also cost me about a thousand one hundred australian dollars and so it was completely unsustainable for me not to mention that once again like botox or formal formaldehyde i'm just not comfortable with uh, putting that into my body on a regular basis. So unfortunately that does come in at number two. It's a much faster option, but once again, not ideal. Number one. Okay. I'm really excited to talk about this one because I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in my previous video and I mentioned that it didn't work. So number one is Yontophoresis. This is something that I've tried multiple times. I've gone to industrial size, like proper um, huge machines to try this out on a regular basis and it didn't work for me. I bought a kit, maybe Yontoderma, and I tried that for whatever they specified, the amount of time. I did whatever it said on the instructions, no luck. I also did that with Dermadry, so I purchased one of their kits and I followed the instructions in the booklet and had absolutely no luck with that too. Then I kept reading that people had had success with it and I thought like, why am I this unlucky person that this doesn't work for? And I decided that, you know what, I'm going to do it every single day for one month which is a lot of time. So it basically takes 20 minutes to do feet, 20 minutes to do hands, so that's 40 minutes. Then I would say 10 minutes to clean up. So drain the water, dry everything off, pack it away. So that's almost an hour every day. So one month, that's pretty much like what? 30 hours in a month. That is... <sighs> pretty much more than a full work week of your month and I thought you know what I'm going to commit to this and I did it every single day for a month. This is really cool you can see that the derma dry is working well. Like the actual sole of my foot is super super dry and you can see where the actual moisture starts which is here all around the sides of the toes and stuff but the actual foot is very dry so I wonder if I'm able to kind of uh, get it to touch that area too, to dry that out. On my hands, same thing, you can see the kind of condensation on the sides and the sweating on the sides and the top, but the actual palm is doing really well. There's still a little bit, but it's not as bad as before. This is just from touching my foot. And I actually got dry hands and it was incredible and there was no chemicals involved i added a sprinkle of salt uh, to the water to affect how hard the water is because that actually helps it and makes it better and yeah it's been pretty life-changing aside from it absolutely draining my time i have completely dry hands without the fear of having to put all these chemicals in my body or spend a thousand one hundred dollars to have dry hands for five months so if you are someone who's tried it and you haven't had any success with it I highly recommend trying it again it's not foolproof it's not permanent it's really difficult for me when I do for example hurt myself so I, I've gone scuba diving quite a bit and cut my hands up a bit on corals and things like that and then I haven't been able to do it because it's really painful and I've had to start again that is really difficult particularly if you go away to bring it with you and remember to do it when you really just want to break it is difficult but it's absolutely worth it so if you are someone struggling from it I know it can also be used for underarms and I highly recommend it. This is not a sponsored video. I also like to combine it with carpe, which is, I think that's how you pronounce it, it might be carpe. And they actually did send me uh, a kit, like a, a, a promotional kit, um, and asked me to post about it if it did work. 
and this was several years ago and I did try it and it didn't work for me. I tried it for whatever was specified on the back. So I think I tried it for maybe a week. So I used it every day for a week in the way that they described and it didn't really work for me. Now I don't use it as the main thing. I use yontophoresis, but I also combine it with that for extra protection and I find that it is an amazing combination. It works really well and it is pretty much life changing. <laughs> so I really hope it works for you guys. I want to know what works for you. If you've tried different things, drop me a comment and 